hello good afternoon good morning good night good evening wherever you are watching this recording um this day today we'll be having a session on, on strings arrangement um i kind of put this session together um after i did an online poll which some of you voted to be interested in and so i wanted to you know share what i've learned so far in my music journey in the area of strings arrangement and um hopefully wanted to answer some of the questions that you would ask me we're going to start anyways hoping that others will join us but if not this video the recording of this session will be made available on youtube so you can watch later and you can send me the questions you might have all right um we're just gonna get into it so here are just all the formalities introduce myself my name is Sophie Clement Stewart as you all know me many know me as Sophie Watt um, I'm a musician I play the keys I'm a gospel musician mainly uh, my passion is in film scoring strings arrangement as you know um, here is a session where everyone is meant to introduce themselves well we're gonna skip that now the session format is going to be this way i'm just going to talk through um everything i have on my slide basically and hopefully wanted to answer some of your questions that you might have um so here we go now um what is strings arrangement i wanted us to start from there so you understand whenever you hear me say or when you hear people say strings arrangement strings arrangement what are they actually referring to so um like the name implies is arrangement arranging music for the string session of an orchestra it's either you are arranging the music for a live orchestra to play or you're arranging it for a virtual orchestra you're playing the role of a virtual orchestra i.e you are creating the orchestra um, arrangement using your vst virtual instrument so uh, two things so when you're arranging for strings is either you're writing it down using a music software like sibelius or logic to write down the score which you print out and give to a live orchestra to play or you're actually um, arranging the music to play yourself and um, I call the virtual orchestra the one-man orchestra like someone like me who would sit down with my keyboard and my laptop and play down a string arrangement that would somehow mimic or sound like the real orchestra now the reason why uh, virtual orchestra is now um, most widely used many of the music you hear you know you hear very lovely strings arrangement strings arrangement sorry and it sounds very sweet um the chances are that if it is not a major project if it's not a big artist chances are that that strings arrangement you're listening to or you heard was created by one man virtual orchestra the reason being that to get a live orchestra to play is very expensive like an orchestra is made up of between 30 50 80 100 people and these people charge a lot so imagine having and then you're paying for the uh, studio sessions you, you don't use small studios you use massive studios that can carry 100 people something like abbey road studios or air studios and then you're paying the sound engineers and the sound engineers that have the technical ability to record an orchestra they're not they're not cheap they're very expensive so all of that taken into consideration taking into account it is very expensive to get an orchestra to record a live orchestra hence people tend to hire arrangers or composers like us to do virtual strings arrangement it is very cheap and you you get something good uh, no no matter how much you do virtual arrangement although it will never come close to the real thing the live orchestra but at least we get the job done i mean from some of the projects we've done we get the work done so now um, having said that to be able to arrange your music for an orchestra in case you're playing you're arranging as in writing for an orchestra to play or you are playing it yourself you must understand the orchestra that is you cannot you cannot um, mimic something that you don't know like mimicking something means you must study that thing if i'm trying to mimic you i will have to study you i'll have to know how you talk i'll have to know how you do everything so that's the same thing with uh, the virtual orchestra you want to mimic the orchestra you must understand the orchestra um i i i decided to use this picture which shows like the um classic um, um what's called outlay of an orchestra um we are focusing mainly on the strings session which is 
where the one we call the violin family i think that is um neon colors is that light purple or anyway it's one of the purple shah so that is we're focusing on that we're basically writing the music so the strings arrangement is writing the music that this session the ones in the front are going to play later on maybe down the line we'll talk about orchestral arrangement where you now writing music for the whole orchestra which is a whole new as in a whole different thing altogether but for today we're focusing on the string session of the orchestra because most music use the strings not every music use a full orchestra but the strings i mean even in church on sunday you're you're you have like a singer will tell you you're playing the piano say add add strings add add, <laughs> add strings add add strings to it so strings music strings is now become and as in it's become the bedrock the the foundation of many music you listen to so that's what we're focusing on this um of uh, string session and then later on in the future we will um begin to look into sorry let me mute my phone we begin to look into the whole orchestra now so looking at the string session looking at the string session you can see that it's made up of different um instrument within the strings family uh, they call it the violin family here but the right time is the strings family now the string session or the strings family is made up of five main strings instrument we have the first violins oh let me say four main instrument actually but five uh, parts so four main instrument violins violas cellos and double basses but um, there are five um, parts because we have the first violins, second violins, which both are violins, violas, cellos, and double basses. We're going to treat this instrument one by one. I need you to understand this instrument. I need you to learn them. I need you to be f become friendly, become conversant with them because you are going to be working with them. I mean, not just in this session, but in your strings arrangement career, you need to understand this instrument. You need to understand the roles they play. And with everything theory is very important you know before you even get into the creating that you need to understand all of these things now the thing the first thing the first instrument now the first uh, sorry the first violin as a first instrument the first violin they play the leading role they play the major role they, they those that play we have the principal violinist they are mainly the first violin if you go back to the image here you can see them here first violins they sit in the front those ones if you go there at the if you go to, to see an orchestra they sit in the front and they call principal violinist you know and they always feel like they're the superstar in an orchestra there's always that um love hate relationship between first violin and second violin like the first violin like you know i am i am boss second violin like yeah there's always that kind of in the orchestra where there's always that kind of thing between the first violin and second violin so, so yeah they, they they sit in the front you see them in the front and in then in, in when they sit that way then in the front row the first person there is called the principal violinist that one is like the you know he's always bugging like he's the last to come inside after before before him and after him then the conductor coming they always use this stradivarius all those kind of porsche violin just and then their suit is always their black suit always extra serene and this suit just to you know just to show that yeah i'm the first violin. <laughs> but i know i've gone to many orchestra shows to see that like there's always like that's that first violin and they're like the guy that every girl wants to be with in the orchestra <laughs> or the guy that every guy wants to be like in the orchestra so i'm kidding but anyway the first violin they carry the they are the main so when you're writing your music when you're writing your um score you want to give um if you're playing if you're writing a violin line and you want um a melody that is technical a melody that is um you know basically you have to satisfy the first violin first then any remainder any remainder any rules that remain okay i still need extra violin mm, my first violin is occupied oh yeah second violin come 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 so the first violin so for instance you might be play you might want to do something like so you want to play that and then you want another violin to be doing so the prominent the predominant uh, melody in this line that is a, that is one you want to give to the first violin oh yeah first violin is still there now that is happening You're like okay okay i need that that Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, second violin, come, 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 come. 
take this part so basically second violin is a pickup um, remaining part that the first violin cannot cover they support basically they play the supporting role so when you're arranging for your orchestra or something for your strings uh, session the first violin the, your first main um, line is taken by the first violin then the remainder is given to the second violin to support basically backup singers <laughs> so first violin lead singers second violin backup singers so like i've explained they play a different pla different parts they, they they help they support the first violin they come in and out they just basically they cover the first violin so and then violins are soprano voice of the strings family hence you write their music on the treble clef the g clef so in case you are arranging for a live orchestra to play you must have this in mind to write the music of the violin in the treble clef and when you're writing it you would indicate if it's the, for the first violin or the second violin so you write this is music for the first violin and you put it outside here you will see one st violin or some people use f f uh, fst or f i r s t violin so you put that there indicate that this is the music for the first violin the music for the second violin now in cases where it's not every arrangement that you have to use first and second violin in cases where it is a simple thingy a melody simple arrangement you can just have one violin it's just basically your first violin that's it just that violin and that will do the job so when you're writing the music you just write violins in the treble club so violins outside and then write the music so we just know that every violin is playing that there is no different music between the first and the cello music first uh, violin and second violin everyone is playing the same thing so you write the music of the violins on the treble clef now we go to violas i know many people i know i have female friends that answer the name viola right so violas they beat um they they, they cover the midi so violins are soprano you know in a vocal arrangement you have soprano alto tenor bass so the violas are the alto so they beat bigger than the so again to know in case you know next time when you go out and you see uh, an orchestra person carrying their violin carrying their strings instrument you should be able to tell by the size violins are the smallest violas are bigger than violins then the next one is cello cello is the bigger one than the violas and then double bass is the one they carry it with them um, they have like trolley they have like trolley that they used to carry uh double bass those ones are very huge so when you see next time you can be able you can tell like oh this is a violin that's a viola you can tell by the size so violas are larger than violins and they just play um they cover the middle space between um um what's it called Stri um, violins and cello so they play the alto role so when you're writing the music for a viola you write it on the alto clef so mo most of people that be watching this you might, might be singers you know so you understand soprano you're writing you're arranging vocal do vocal arrangement for singing you understand to write the music for um sopranos the same thing with altos they, they, they sit in the middle the middle um, um um what's it called melody or middle harmony sorry they stay in the middle the next bit is cello the cellos provide the lower register of the harmony in the orchestra they they they, they, they um the for me the cello is is this is the heart is the heart is the I said I wrote I said PS this is my favorite instrument because of its register the way it sits like I think I have a cello here the way they sit in the in the, in the in the music it allows them to reach out to the soul violins sometimes can be a bit harsh can be a bit high violins a little bit high but cello they just sit in this middle register where when you just you know if you if you sorry my you see that now if you you can just do i don't know if you can hear me well but it's it, see that you can hear that sound it's just it just hits your heart just exactly where you where you're you know when you're sitting you're resting your resting state you know your you resonates with your heart you know resonance no like um they say there is this common musical uh, myth or uh, knowledge that if you want to make the man start to dance make somebody start to dance make a music that resonates with their resting frequency our resting heart rate is 120 bpm so when you begin to play music that is from 120 bpm up 
naturally it begins to resonate so you just begin to oh yeah shake body small small you're just moving your body without even knowing so that's the same thing with cello cello sits in the arresting voice like most of us talk when you relax and talk cello music the register of cello is just around our normal talk. so it just or anytime you hear an orchestra anytime you go and you hear that that that, that film that the music is just moving and it's just in that low register it's not high it's not it's cello that is doing that thing to you and it's just i just love the cello it's one of my favorite um, string instruments i use it a lot to drive emotion so for me when i'm arranging i use the chair i use the violins to do this uh, violin and cello um, uh, violas to do the instruments uh, uh, moving all of that violin introduces the melody uh, violas support the melody but when i want to emphasize the melody and drive it into your heart i always use the cello and it does the work it does it so um cellos are to be written on the tenor clef they are the tenor uh, voicing of the family so we have covered soprano uh, uh, violins as sopranos violas as altos cellos as tenor now we're going to the last one the double basses the double basses these are the like the huge when you go you see them very huge the tower above the play and they sit on on um what's it called on stools to play them so they emit low muted most sometimes rhythmic notes that it heard when they plug them do, 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 they sound you know very very heavy and when brought into the mix they they give they just they they ground the melody they ground the melody they ground the music they just give it because there's something about balancing the music having the highs having the middle having the low and then having the sobs it just balances when you go to the cinema and you're hearing that uh, um melody for instance mu uh, f cinema music one even after even playing with double bass they, they tend to composers tend to use sub synth bass to just to drive the point home just so that your speakers are vibrating when you're hearing orchestra music but in a real life orchestra they don't use sub bass they just use the double basses just to drive the point home it is that it, it forms a stable foundation over which the rest of the orchestra notes can resound they just they form the foundation and they they're written on the bass clef which is the f clef now i i brought this to show you the different clefs i was talking about this is the treble clef or the g clef this is the bass clef or the f clef this is alto clef this middle line is the c line by the way is the middle c and this is the tenor clef just um let have a look at these look at them you know when you are writing their music for instance remember when i told you if you're writing for first violin you come here and you write your one st violins you understand or v1 vi in your software sibelius or logic so you have vi and then do the second one vii so first violin second violin and then the next that will come will be the auto the next that will follow will be the tenor and then the bass will be at the end the last so you have them like this arranged one on top of another in your music sheets so yeah now the next thing in a um, strings arrangement is setting up your door digital audio workstation you know have the picture of the orchestra in mind like i always say now violins um should be panned left if you remember <coughs> we'll go back to that picture again violin should be panned left violas in center forward cellos panned to the right double bases let's go back to the picture at the beginning now if you look at this picture this is how you set up your door like your digital digital audio workstation so you load up your violins um how many you want to use don't use too much don't use too much you know just to the key thing is you know we're gonna get there when you when you know the um the music you want to play you know exactly the kind of size you want to use so set up your violins and then the next thing is your violas the next thing is your cello the next thing is your double basses you know when you've done that everything needs to have their space in the mix i know you're not mix engineers but still you need to do just some rough editing just to make it sound everything will not sound from the center so if you look at this when somebody is listening to an orchestra this is what they will hear the first violins the first and second violins will be coming they will be hearing more from the left because of where it is in this so you can see that your first violins you you want to pan your first violins to probably a uh, 30 I, I would go into let me let me go into um uh, let 
da 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 da. I need to. I need to stop sharing this and share another one with you. Share this so you can see my um, logic screen. Great. So this is my. Um, this is my orchestra. Uh, this is my virtual orchestra. I call it Movensonus Symphonic Orchestra. So this is my orchestra setup. Full everything. I have my uh, wing. This is for if I'm scoring for football for the for full orchestra. For this, we're just focusing on the the strings, which is from here to here. We're just focusing on that. Um, the rest are these are wind instruments. I have the horns, brass instruments, you have the tuned percussion, untuned percussion, percussions and all of that. But we're focusing on the strings. So let me open my mixer. Now, this is my strings session. For my strings session, I have one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, el one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven strings instruments. I have violin one violin two i just have one violin Vi as a first violin second violin i have um violas these things by the way when i say one i mean like violins so this is first violin this is second violin this is viola this is cello this is basses so these are the five of them these other extra strings ensemble i use them to do layers but this number one from violin one to do i use them to drive to, to accentuate the melody make them sharp then the rest i use them to just view the body those will come to uh, there's some there's a time i'm going to come to refer to i call them the wave this wave in the background that they come in and now uh, other thing <laughs> sorry oh my like this <laughs> so let me seriously remember why am i like this but yeah the wave that carry you yeah i use the ensemble to do all of that something like this you know yeah this uh, So, um, so I use these ones to play my chords, my feels. While this one, I use them, I play them individually as melody, individual notes, draw them in. I either play them in or draw them in. The same thing with these ones, cello, so I play individual notes, but these ones. I play chords this is the one that if you're playing in church and somebody say give me strings uh -huh. string ensemble so I use this one now to combine all of the melody I have played in fact sometimes when I'm arranging my strings I actually tend to play I'll tell you later on when we get to arranging I tend to just play the idea using my strings ensemble string ensemble means a collection of the whole thing so in this strings ensemble you hear violin you hear violence you have cello you have basses everything there depending on the octave as you play so as i'm feeling it i could literally use my strings ensemble play it then i'll now break down my strings ensemble notes and i separate them to different to accentuate them using the individual um, instrument but let's not get carried away with, with the playing first let's do the arrangement as in the setting up your door which is key setting up your door setting up your workstation is very important okay like I said, you need to have a picture of the orchestra in mind to set up your um, door, which is a digital audio workstation. You must have that in mind. And um, remember, I showed you the picture of the orchestra before. I'm also going to open it here. Now, looking at this software, which is from um, BBC Symphonic Orchestra, you can see that my my violins are on this side, so they're already the sound is panned to come out on the left. That is the reason why I don't pan it here. I didn't pan it in this place like normally if i wanted if i didn't if i'm not using the bbc if you're using logic logic is not panned automatically you have to do it yourself if you're using logic you have to know the the violence sorry the violence jesus violence jesus the kingdom of god suffer violence <laughs> the violence will, <laughs> the first violin will go for something like 30 or let's say 40 here your ear you want to you want it is this place but it's very big thing when you pan something here you can pick it up it's very unique it's not lost in the mix you want to put it at 40 if you go back again to that image you can see you can see this is about 40 so the first violin and this is second violin so if we are saying this is 40 or yeah if we are saying 40 or 30 let's 
we're going to logic if say we put that either 40 or 30 yeah for the uh, first violence second violence if you come back again to that image remember having the image of the cash in mind second violence will be somewhere around let's say 15 pound 15 degree to the left because that's where they are they are the supporting i love this software because they even tell you if you go back to the notes i shared earlier, they even tell you what the, the role they play the supporting backbone of the violin these ones are the focal point of the um orchestra you understand so you pan in the violin second violin i mean to say to about 15 understand everything must have their place in your in your mix so they are not like dragging space with each other have that back of your mind then the next thing is our violas i'm just showing you how to set up you know your door because that's important your violas your violas are going to the right so again we're going to put the violas to let's say 15 degrees to the right 15 degrees to the right yeah 15 degrees to the right then you have your cellos cellos you put them like 30 or 40 degrees to the right 30 or 40 degrees to the right i'm just using this same channel just to show you how to set up 30 or 40 degrees to the right now going back again to our orchestra this is the double basses now the double basses they sound from far right so far right when you do this you use your reverb to push them to the far right but i don't do that because the reason why i didn't i will go back to my notes the reason why i don't put the bass to the far right is because bass is um, a low frequency and there is this rule in mixing that you know you tend to keep low frequencies in the middle so i tend to leave my bass in the middle you understand so i put um heavy frequencies in the middle so for that for my that's my choice but a real life orchestra will have the bass on the far right and that's where you hear it from but if you listen to the mix they will push it to the center if they record they will just push it in the center though some will be coming up from the rubber heavy in the center because of you know mixing purposes so this is my um this is a is a picture of my orchestra like i said the name is Moven sonos uh, symphonic orchestra vst orchestra so yeah this is my orchestra this is my orchestra setup so i'm going to um switch to our lesson uh, what we were using before this coming back to this now yeah so we had this in mind we're talking about setting up your uh, digital audio workstation after you've done that you have your sound the next thing you need to understand again remember you know i would always be recapping remember you are playing the role of a virtual orchestra you understand you're the one-man orchestra the person that is creating the music doesn't have the budget to hire a full orchestra so they come to you and they say sharon they say Fermi, they say sofiri please create the strings um, arrangement for us play the string for us so now i am playing the role i am the orchestra i am in Dabowski. <laughs> sorry sorry i'm a very serious human being but i tend to misbehave somehow. anyway i am the orchestra i have to remember we said from the beginning i have to understand the orchestra hence we even studying the orchestra before we even getting to the arrangement properly I have to understand the orchestra i'm trying to mimic the orchestra so i need to understand i study what i want to mimic so one of the things and um, we got to look into is strings articulations strings articulations there are five five main strings articulations there, there are many other ones but there are five main ones we have the legato so the legato this one is the common one everybody use you know that warm one that is like a wave like anytime you need especially most of us are keyboardists in children they say oh when the person say i need strings play strings for me what you're mainly playing is your legato strings basically the one that is sustained something like this that is a legato strings it's sustained one note is sustained to the other so if the first note is sustained even if you touch one note see it's like so it's sustaining to the next one now staccato staccato they are sharp they are separated i use this a lot for emphasis for action for creating rhythm like um i'll play some of some uh, if we have time i'll play some of the works i've done like to show to just give you an example of each of these instruments um pizzicato again is pizzicato means pluck 
physical to pluck when you hear the thing it means a string that is plucked it also use is we use it to create rhythm as well as harmonics above staccato so sometimes um, I, uh, um when i play staccato strings i tend to use a pizzicato string just to layer over the staccato to give it harmonic to just give it that feel like the score that i did for this bridgeting competition i used a combination of that when you listen above you hear the um, pizzicato a lot of times when you when you watch movies especially anticipation or as uh, or uh, um creating curiosity especially for kids movies listen to children movies they use pizzicato a lot Bam, bang, bang. It sounds I'll show you it's very plugged. I'll, I'll, I'll play one for you. I'll go when I go back to my logic. I'll play a pizzicato for you. You need to understand these different strings to know exactly what you want to achieve. You understand? So, um, like I said, I'll play different examples for you where I use them and how they played into the mix because you need to, it's not just the gato that is the only thing that is there. You cannot, you want to, like, um, James Bond or uh, what's that? No, 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 I think it's Mission Impossible. Uh, what is that? What's that? Uh, uh, forgotten, I've forgotten this Mission Impossible, but Mission Impossible, dum 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 Now that is sharp. You cannot use legato for that. If you guys use legato, what do you hearing? Dun 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 dun. No. So um, that that music is very sharp. So using staccato, dum dum dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So that is staccato, and then we we'll talk about trills. Trills are embellishment. You hear? Um, before that, uh, before that mission impossible, you hear, you hear something like dun, dun. So that that is trill. So when you play two notes, alternating between two notes faster, da -da 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 -da, that's trills. And now tremolo is like trill, but the only difference is tremolo. You are playing the same note. You're playing one one that same note, the same time as the same rate like you do trills, and that is very important if you're trying to create this. Anytime you hear movie score, I use this again for um, I use that idea, this articulation in the composition I did for bridge acting. You hear something like so we just they're playing one note, and sometimes you leave, by the, after this session, I believe when you next you go to movies, you begin to pick out all of these things when you hear movies like yeah like an action is building. All I did, all I did was just pick up my, I say pick up, um, on my, on my, um, on my MIDI. Sorry if I'm getting too excited. <laughs> on my MIDI, I was just playing the percussion. Just that percussion alone, and then I play my tremolo. Just all like one note. That's that that that's that is done. That scene, that movie scene. You already. You really, ah, what's about to happen? What's about to happen? One note by percussion, and I'm just some, and then I'll just bring in my pizzicato and then, so you see how the different, you know, exactly, you know, what sound each of them makes, so that helps you, you know, know what you, you can even listen about these things, you hear them in your head, you know, sometimes you know, you get like you hear them in your head. You're able to, when we get into the creating itself, you're able to record the, the madness that's happening in your head. And then you know exactly what sound that would create that thing that is in your head. You understand? So what I just did right now, it's just a rough idea, but I could, you know, just a rough idea of how you want to create an anticipation for the movie. So you know exactly, you have that. Ah, you have that in your head. And like, ah, how do I make it happen? If you don't know your strings articulation and you go and stay with legato, ah, that which is the common one, you will stay there and you will try it for till Jesus come. You will not get that sound. But when you know that ah, this to get for me to get this, de, 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 ah, I need to I need I need to use a tremolo. I need to use a string with tremolo effect. So let me show you. Let me let us go to our um our logic and put these thoughts into action so <clears throat> um i'm going to logic now to share my screen to show you now i'm logic i'm on logic now i will use let me open just uh legacy i'm going to use logic stop so you can see even if you don't because some of these things i'm using here are not logic stop 
so I'm gonna use logic strings which everybody would have now let's go remember I talked about strings uh, tremolo right so let's start with that one now you can hear I'm holding one note that's very fast so the plane so I can slow down the 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 um the speed using my tempo guide and all of that so if I'm that's stream tremolo now um now staccato uh, sorry pizzicato remember I told you pizzicato is plugged so assuming that you know let's actually see if we can build something with this just create a rough idea i don't the tempo let's do something uh so that's there let's see if we can create that um use that to just build a simple score let me open this for a second so i know where it starts from okay so from here to here so that's playing this just one note that's tremolo <clears throat> so you know you have an idea of what a tremolo sounds like so like i said i wanted to do uh something on top as that's happening if i have my percussion somewhere let me see if I can find. Hold on, this is loading. Okay. So that's happening somewhere. Let me see if I can find. I know this is not film scoring, but just to give you an idea of what they sound like and what role they can play for you if you understand. Where is this? Where is this tune percussion? Is it this? Ah, I can't find Let me use it. Coming. Okay. So I'm going to use an FM builder to just create a percussion to just keep us. Um, Just give us like a hint of you know so i'm gonna use this fmb then now so that's just again remember we are trying to understand the different strings articulations the different strings articulations so pizzicato sounds like this see that plugged 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 so plugged with hand and now um staccato again staccato is also sharp sorry staccato is sharp like this so that's um, sorry that's true disjointed right and then trios sounds like this if you've watched uh, mission impossible here yeah. dum 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 so that is um and then we'll have the um legato which is the like i said sustained beat now we're gonna see how they play we're just gonna create something rough something rough with this idea so i choose the wrong i'm gonna create something rough with these idea and just so you see how they all have different roles they play in the articulation so i'm going to so i use that to build my 
anticipation so something like this by the way I edit as I go so it gives me the so I'm looking for this did not come in exactly where I want it to be ones are for later but anyway so so that's my staccato by the way i remember i told you staccato is useful for creating that action like you know it's also rhythmic like you're building action building um anticipation creating movement in your strings Sakata is very useful. So I'm gonna use that something like five. So just an again, again remember they're all playing different role in the strings. Again, this is just and I just just rough. I'm just showing you and I just showing you how each of them play different role in the in the strings that is not just the one that we all know the sustained one where you know like i said when they ask you to play strings in church you're you're likely playing your legato you understand you're likely playing your why am i saving this force of habit you're just playing your legato sustained strings like give me strings you know the singers that come like give me strings like yeah that's okay but when you're arranging for strings it's not just your legato that you know all of i the legato is the last one i use it to cover space which you so so remember to do the pizzicato So I don't know if you heard that. I'm gonna do that one more time. See huh? So now okay, let me just add the hallelujah which is the legato now which everybody knows so yeah something like this so that's too high for me so yeah something like that. okay so it's so similar so Anyway, that's just a hint of each of the. We're gonna go back to our notes now. I just wanted that to. I just wanted to show example of um, what each of them sound like, each of the articulations, because you need to understand these articulations when you are creating your strings or oh, you know legato staccato pizzicato strings tremolo and then you begin to hear things like other oh, performance direction like crescendo like you know we're gonna get to that so where to start from where to start from where to start from i uh, it's a cheeky person say from your heart and basically that's actually where you start from you see what we just did here now right here just just the exercise we just did right now that was from nowhere uh, not from it was from somewhere from from somewhere from heaven from somewhere why would i say nowhere so it was from somewhere from somewhere nothing comes from nowhere so the heart is where you start from now remember again you're playing the role of the virtual orchestra again the musician or the artists don't have money to get a real orchestra they want to say 
they come to you sharon they come to you family they come to steward they come to you watching this like hey create a virtuous change for us so you want to listen to the music i'm like okay send me the music they'll send it to me and i'll listen to the music i will stay in the music i would you can't do strings without um your heart it's an emotive instrument like it requires your heart that's the core you cannot do every person if you watch um there was a time i just last i think it was last week i shared a video of me doing strings arrangement for a particular song yeah it's always an emotive moment for me sometimes i cry sometimes basically if i'm score if i'm doing a score there was a particular score i did for a ladies project which was against which was about abuse and all of that i was i was sad and it's from that sadness then I'm not pulled. So basically, you have to be real. I I felt that 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 scene when it, it had to be sad. So I felt the sadness, and then I unloaded the sadness into the door. And then when you listen to that music, you'll always feel sad because it came from it was inspired by sadness. So it's from the heart. You need to tap into something to create it. It's is if you ask any composer, they will tell you you have to. It's not something you just do. Uh, you have to connect to the music. So somebody brings a gospel music for you. Uh, one of the examples I will use later on, I will put in a project if, uh, if we have the time, is um, it's a, a song I produced for Kaleo, it's called Hallelujah. I still, I still remember the string session that I was in studio, myself alone. I was listening to the sound and the, 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 um, the inspiration behind the music is just about, you know, it's high, no, so not Hallelujah, sorry, uh, the glory, the glory. So it's like the throne room of God, like, you know, like in, when the Bible described when the throne of God was opened and all the sin that was happening, all the gospels that was happening, yeah. So imagine you trying to interpret. So this is this. That's what you do. It's a conversation. You're trying to, just like the lyrics is, the singer is singing. And you want to interpret the music with strings. So wow, the glory, oh your glory is in this place. Oh Lord, that's a song. The strings need to explain to the listener that the glory of God is in this place what does the glory of god sound like from the strings perspective that is what you're thinking about again that is one example of a song another song could be when i did for tag praise was um, miracles so miracles atmospheric miracles is coming coming my way what does miracles sound like if you want to speak with the language of the strings that's what you're thinking about so you listen to the music you understand the music you understand the vision behind the music like somebody like Hans Zimmer, when he's composing for a film, he works close with the music that I with the film director, the film producer. Like for instance, when he works with Christopher Nolan, they sent he will send him the script. He will sit down with uh, Christopher Nolan. He will discuss with Christopher Nolan. What 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 where did this come from? What are you looking at? You know, sometimes um, Hans Zimmer will go. He will meet the artist um, when he worked for Bat, uh, sorry uh, Spider Man, Electro when Jimmy Fox. Uh, Jimmy Fox was a lecturer in Spider-Man. That was his first encounter with uh, Hans Zimmer. He said he's never met a composer that will come to the filming um, site and ask the artist. You know, there's one thing we call character theme song. If you don't know that, whenever you watch movies, like uh, when a character comes on, when the main character comes on, or when a villain character comes on, there is always a sound that follows it. It's called the character theme song. So he went to the uh, he went to Jimmy Fox. I'm like, he asked Jimmy Fox, "What do you What are you feeling like?" He was recorded. He recorded the voice note. What are you feeling? Describe what you want to feel as an electro, you know, as a villain. What do you want to feel to get into character? Jimmy Fox described something to him, and then Hans Zimmer went home, and then came back the following day, then gave Jimmy Fox a headphones. Jimmy Fox said that sound, that sound got him into playing electro. Like, and he said he got me, and that's exactly what it is. So, you you want to understand the project. You want to understand the project itself. You, once you understand the project. You begin to listen out for space. You begin to like listen out for the melody because as the um, strings arranger, you are not, you're not, you're not coming to steal somebody else's show. You're coming to amplify the music. So you are drawing from the thread of the music. Like, okay, I hear this melody. Ah, this melody is nice. I hear this melody here. I hear this melody here. Oh, I like that harmony that the beef did there. Let me borrow you. I hear this there. Okay, they don't have this melody. What I call like something I call them. Um, counter harmony the counter they don't have it here i'll bring it here they're meant to sing it but they didn't sing it but i can hear it uh -huh. so these are the things when you listen to the song like okay space space melody melody harmony okay this is what i'm hearing i go sometimes what i do is i i use my um i use my voice audio recorder 
I record um, the idea into the voice, whatever I'm hearing or whatever I'm feeling, or I play it in. Just play it in. Like I always say, the next thing I say is uh, in this in this my PowerPoint is creating your score. Now that you feel the song or music that comes to mind, this is your most vulnerable moment. This is this this is the most vulnerable. This is where a lot of us lose it. This is where you begin to argue with yourself. You are hearing something. You're feeling something. This is the most very your mind will begin to tell you is rubbish. This happens a lot. I have I had to train myself. This is the difference between uh, uh, an, an experimentalist, a creator, an arranger, with every other person who is still waiting for that perfect project to release. Because this part is where it is. Your mind is telling you, nah, my body is saying, yeah. Anyway, let's not go to Africa. Listen. But yeah, your mind is telling you, nah, it's rubbish. Forget about it. And you're waiting. You know, sometimes you're sitting down. You, you're waiting for that eureka moment. I want I want the strings to just hit me like this. Bah. No. Once you listen to the music, like, begin to play around, begin to play what you're hearing, play it inside. Pulling the idea, record the nonsense that comes to your mind. After you recorded everything that comes to your mind, you see what the exercise that we just did now. It didn't make sense. But if I spend one more day, not that it didn't make sense. It sounded that that is the, the exercise we did there. Yeah, that is just four bar. Is it how many bar? I can't remember. I can guarantee you with no humility that I would create a score. I could create a major score using that line. If I sit down with it one more day and you hear it and like all oh my days. Is that's the thing with screens, like you know, or not just screens, with any idea you're working on, you know, sit with it, stay with it, keep pulling on the thread that comes to mind, record everything that comes to your mind, bearing in mind the things we've covered before, the articulation, you know, what this sounds like. I want something like to do me that 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 okay, what to give me that sound? I record it to my uh, my phone. That that I record it, I sit down, what would give me that sound? That could probably be a combination of staccato and pizzicato. I go to my door, open those two things, I play that. That idea is there. Then I want. Oh, give me an idea. A cello will do that. I bring it. So you now know the different instrument. You know the one that will give you the sound. Not just legato. Not just give me strings like they tell in church. You now know the different sound. So that helps you. You exactly you pulling out your sound, bringing them together. Now sit down and separate the none from the sense. So. Look out for what we call the late motif, recurring melodies. In the midst of the nonsense, you can isolate at least four bars of pattern. And so if you identify that four bars of pattern, I'm talking to you in this sense, more like in the film scoring direction, because that's, you know, late motif is like film scoring, like you find your motif. This is your recurring melody, this is your recurring theme. Once you discover it, you isolate it. Your late motif now serves as the center and foundation upon which you build your score. <laughs> And the gates of hell will not feel like against it. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm a very serious person, like I keep saying. But yeah, yeah, so let that. And that is now you have your motive. This is what you're going to build your score around. Now, I said, what's the next thing you answer? What string expression or techniques are you going to use? Is it staccato? Is it legato? Is it pizzicato? Is it tremolo? Is it true? You have already answered all of that. What string session should you use? Uh, so you're beginning to assign um, um, assignments now. Remember, we talked about the various um, uh, uh, subsessions in the strings family: first violin, second violin, viol uh, violas, cello, and double basses. So <clears throat> now, what string session should do what? How you're assigning your role? You know, you are the conductor now. You are deciding which to play. Who, what is going to play what? So when I say well, first violin, I want you to play this part of the line. Second violin, I want you to play this. Violas, I want you to play that. Uh, cellos you do this double basses you do that remember you are the one in control you assign their roles to them also bearing in mind their range don't go and give a violin range to cello thinking cello is going to play it won't work some of the softwares i use are a bit advanced they have a range on the keyboard if you go and touch high you won't hear a sound because they are only isolated to their range in real life so you get more realistic sound because i've heard people play violin line with the cello like because some VST instrument would allow you to do that, but that is not how it's done in real life. So you must have that in mind. You must not give violin line to the cello. You must not, you must not give cello line to the violin, except you now rewrite the music of the cello on the violin uh, uh, clef, which means it to be higher. You get it? So remember I showed you the picture of the clefs, 
this clef. So the treble clef is where you write the music for, or you write or play the music for the violin. And then the tenor is for the um, cello. So you will not give, ideally, you will not give the cello music to the violin. If that's to happen, you have to rewrite this in this um, what's it called range, so that the cello can, the cello, um, the violinist can play it. You understand? So just have that in your mind. So what is playing? What after I sign the role? The next thing is volume, note velocity, expression, automation. Again, remember, keep the image of a real life strings player as you play. I've seen a lot. I've got, I love to go to watch orchestra live. They are very dramatic and expressive. Remember, I told you the strings is very expressive, very expressive. You see them do like this. They, it's like as if they remember that guy that played for um, Megan and Harry's wedding. You can see the way he was playing. You know, doing all of that is like as if they're pulling the strings from somewhere. They're pulling the melody from somewhere. So that expression, you must have that image in your mind, so that when you're playing your strings, you have to mimic all of that expression. Hence, sometimes when I'm playing, if if I'm creating strings, I like to do it alone. It's my vulnerable state. I was only brave enough to share a clip of me doing that last week. Or was it last week or this week? And that is the one time I don't think I'll share that again because it's like a vulnerable time where. I am creating something the, the facial expression or sometimes like I said you cry and it basically you're trying to and those those things when you feel it you are able to recreate it and the listener will feel it so volume how you volume and velocity note velocity when you're playing the midi remember you are creating the orchestra you are to play you hear like um the cellist who plays and be like so again you must you must you must reflect that in your expression so i use a combination of expression pedal my mood wheel so sometimes the pedal if i want to drop down the expression i use i use my expression pedal to reduce it i said i'm building up and coming up again i used i said something here about um um i talked about wave you know have the image of a wave sorry i think i, I can't remember where i mentioned it there's something that I mentioned, I talked about, yes, I said here, look out for space, keep a picture of water waves in your mind, you know, water waves, like, if you go to the beach, like the seashore, they come, they rise and go, that's the same thing with your uh, uh, um, strings, you know, you ride, you don't just stay, it's just few Nigerian music that I hear, the strings will just stay like that, like ancient of this, just sing level to the song, ah, no, no, the strings not naturally sound like that, like, the 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 automate in volume they come they come like a wave they're like they know so all of this combination of highs and lows i say decide when you, you decide when to um when to drive and when to step back in when to drive you can i said you can't be high all the time you're not the most high you can't stay there even the move you cannot stay high all through no strings they have that the, what, what causes that feeling is the expression is just that wave so one minute they're just in your phone woo, the next minute they've gone back in the background and just stay they just one note could even stay in the background and just at the back of it and you just hear there and then the next thing yeah something comes up so you must have that wave in mind so how do you achieve all of that combination it is your combination of your volume note velocity expression and automation now for me i play them in i wish i have a moving camera to show you around you know the on the keyboard or but the expression pedal like you know i like to i like to play them in while playing at the same time so they give me the feeling some people tend to play and then manually draw in the expressions later when i say manually drawing i would show you let's go back to logic um let's go back to logic how people can manually draw an expression which i don't encourage because it takes a whole lot of time to do that so for me i like to just play it in as i'm going so the composition that we did this one if you look at it there was no i did not use a sustain pedal i did not use any expression pedal so so this is it this is the midi file which is where i come to edit this doesn't have any expression how do you click and find that this is your expression place yeah click on this midi draw now if you see this is at the moment showing me the node velocities which is different remember i talked about node velocities it helps you this one is is lower is 49 yeah the velocity is 49 this is 84 
they are different so combination of these velocities will help you when you want to do slow you when you want to do low velocity you touch the notes very soft when you want to increase velocity you depress it more but also after doing that you can also come and manually edit the velocity here now another thing you can edit is the um, expression volume panorama modulation all these things full control Ed these are other things that you can edit let us edit the volume yeah assuming i did not have my volume expression pedal to join the volume i could come in now after having played it and then i'll do something like sorry something like oh i need to change this to uh da -da 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 -da. curve to let me see if that work that didn't work I need to manually draw in my volume like this. Let me change it back to drawing pencil. So, what I'm doing now, I'm manually drawing it. So, all of this, when the, this is down, the volume comes down. When I do, it goes up. So, combination of all of this will give you the up and down wavy kind of feel. So normally I don't draw them in, I use my expression pedal to play because I mean it's a long work. Imagine I'm composing for like even one minute song, then begin to draw the automation. Oh, that's a long thing. I, mean. I use my expression pedal to just play it in. And then I come and then I edit. I find tune like okay, this one is not me. I don't want it to be down here. I'll just remove it. So it's drawn in. Just this is like an idea of our volume expression. Another thing you can control is the expression. The down here drops down and then I beat it up again so a combination of all of these things uh, what else do I want to control these are the key things I actually want to control so three things I want to control or you want to control in your um, um what's it called composition is your volume expression so when I mean volume volume your expression your node velocity those three things combination of those three things it gives you that wavy feeling remember you want to sound like a real orchestra you are the one man orchestra here so we go back to our notes we go back to our note we're almost um i'm almost done here in this go back to our notes yeah now remember that you, you have to keep a, an understanding when you want to go high when you want to draw back in the background a combination of all these things would help you you know create something and now editing and mixing once you're playing in all you have in mind you have to sit back listen over to fine tune remove irrelevant beat volume blending is necessary so your orchestra will sound as one well. your goal is to sound as real as possible to a virtual to a real orchestra as much as possible so you blending in again remember you are trying to mimic the orchestra the lesson is connected from the first one understand the orchestra understand what you're trying to mimic because that is what you're doing i am trying to arrange the strings for the orchestra it's either i'm writing it for the orchestra to play or i am playing it with my virtual instrument which is the second one is more likely what you'll be doing like playing with your virtual instrument so i want to sound like real orchestra so i must understand who i am trying to mimic you understand the various orchestra like if you go from this lesson today forget about um creating the melody and all of that if you go from this lesson and you go study the orchestra and you understand the orchestra understand the instrument and what roles they play yeah you're fine melody will come to you melody is not hard understanding the orchestra understanding the articulation understanding the role and the sound of each of them knowing that if i want to if this melody comes to my mind you can tell yourself this is the part of the orchestra that should play that you're good to go your orchestra you just see that your arrangement to be different in fact you can go back to all of those composition you did before with your legato and just rethink them but with the own with the image of the orchestra in mind as like, okay this this thing i did now with legato you know what i could have actually pushed these notes and given to the violin to play given this one to the cello given and you just see just doing that alone 
your this thing will just clean up and then you begin to fine tune your expression and volume blending once you do that you just realize that oh my days your arrangement sounds so much more better okay so this part i wanted to i want to show you example of the things i've done and you know what um technique i use as it's cg smile what typical example of accompanying the mel melody trumpet solo to t like a wave ah if logic would behave itself for me to open for me to open it if logic would behave itself for me to open that particular project and show you hold on a second let me look for it um cg cg by the way if you have okay i think i have yes i have a, a video of me i am going to share my screen with you now if you have a question be preparing it for those that want to ask questions so this i did um i did the behind the scene of the arrangement so i'm going to play this the key thing i want to pick up from is um uh what's it called um the way the strings this is more like i did a legato for this particular one now listen to this music is a leg i this i listen to it like okay i need legato for this one i need legato for this one i should not move my just there's something we call gum but i need to follow the music so i that's exactly what i did here so listen to this Now, going back to that, when the trumpet is the main thing. Now, the music, if I play the, the if I play the song without my strings, yeah, it's just the music is just straight with a trumpet solo. Like, so I, I I listen to the trumpet and like ah it was like I don't know if you know what they call um trading, but it was some sort of a trading. I will we we'll play it again. we com I'm conversing with the trumpet. So I pulled my I listened to the trumpet. Ah the trumpet tap tap da ba da I say I said okay we're going up and then I bring it out again so if you watch if you watch it again you see the you can see you can see the the expression by the, the volume expression this one is the um, a sustained pedal expression if I open the project I will show you many attitude many expressions that was happening there the way they will they will go up you can see that at a point in time the string just it was just it was swelling up swelling up swelling up, and then it dropped down again you can also see the note velocity let's go back again watch out for all of that i hold myself so if do you notice that like the the trumpet as the trumpet is resting i was resting with the trumpet underneath it so we go back again to that so together again I drop down and then I now like a silver and a buga swear up in the again you swelling up the meat can you see Remember when I told you before about node velocities? You can see that in the beginning, it's purple. Now in frequencies, these ones are small, small. 
purple they have they have means low velocity green when you see red i use red it's more likely for percussion like they are hard that's that's hard eating so you can see how a combination of all of the things i told you before note velocity um expression this is sustained pedal if i open this in the project you will see something like volume expression automation you can see different things where we're being drawn moving up and down sometimes when i finish my volume automation and you watch the mixer the mixer is doing moving up and down because they are just rising and falling so all of this combination it gives you this feeling and you know exactly when to crescendo that is an example of um i used this for so we go back yeah uh what's it called so i see this my what is typical example of accompanying the melody trumpet solo to a t like a wave it was wavy you're coming to the t you're not still in the show the trumpet is the solo i'm not coming to studio so me i can do my own if i will show you another example of uh, i don't know if i can find it uh, uh, there's another example where uh let me look for it i used um let me see if I can find yeah yeah just to so I just wanted to challenge where can I find it hmm. can't find it but anyway, I wanted to show an example of where I did another um, madness. So, okay, we go to this one. I said the next thing is CG's 247 challenge, a mixture of various articulation. I just, I'm using this, um, uh, what's it called, just to show you the different things we've covered, how they play into um, your arrangement or have used them. Mixture of so this one now so you remember we talked about trills so that's trills and then I did I used um, a combination of um, um, woodwind with flute and then some pizzicato as well because those ones those notes are different i cannot do that with a legato i cannot do that rip with a legato remember legato is sustained rip. i use a legato for the first one that one is useful I, that, that first one if i go and use staccato for that first um example i should do cole it will not work because that one drags from one to the next but this one i, rip, I needed a staccato so i use a staccato and a pizzicato so this is a game two again so remember that no again i need a sharp hitting moving in and out strings legato wouldn't do for me staccato and pizzicato is staccato mainly here staccato that i use i use pizzicato in the part of the rip because of the plug effect but and then with um woodwind but staccato so Again, I told you, you need to understand your texture so that when you have this idea, because you get the idea, the thing about it is most of all get this idea, you get the idea, but you just struggle to which sound and how, what articulation should I combine to get that. So that's the staccato. Also in the background, if you hear, you can hear my legato is still so they just warming the body, just giving the body. But the hard hitting part is staccato and woodwinds, understand? And heat. So again. Now this is part, this is the part where so you see, I want you to understand the different um, um, communication. All this one now, the first violin is just the, 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 the moving, moving mad, doing playing staccato. The <clears throat> the strings assemble, the legato has been in the background, just minding the business. But now, 
if I'm the conductor of this my virtual orchestra now, I'm signaling to the second violins, the ones that are playing the sustain chord, that oh yeah, legato, it's your turn now to shine. Now what is? So if you hear that, hear, hear them like. Dee -dee -dee. That is the second violin is having their moment now to shine playing the legato but at the same time the first violin is also moving mad the first violin they are doing their thing above together so you know i i find orchestra to be very interesting because orchestra is 100 about 50 to 100 musicians playing and it's not madness it's making sense because everybody has their place let's go back again to that i use this example because a lot of a lot of things were happening so so all this while So now if, if we're gonna listen to it again. So the first time listen to it, you hear the that is the legato doing its work. But above that, you will hear this madness. So now let's listen to the staccatos now. So again, so so you can see the combination of these different articulations bringing out the beauty in the this thing in the in the melody. So I just I use this example to show you how you can combine these things. You can combine in this particular example, this CG247 is a mixture of various articulations. There is a trio there, there is the staccato, the spizzicato, there is legato, all of them happening at the same time, and they together they give you this realistic feel. I have so many other projects which I would have wanted to get into, but you know it's not here and there. You you guys you get the gist already now. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is my playlist. Yeah, my playlist. Um, you gotta listen to orchestral arrangement. You gotta listen to them. I have Hanzima, Snacky Puppy, Hanzima, Corey Henry, Hanzima, Jacob Kelly, Hanzima, other composers like Alexander Dexplat. Uh, Matt Jones, I had a master class with Matt Jones one on one. I have the video somewhere, as in we sat down on Zoom. Uh, what's it called? I asked him a few questions over the lockdown period, and then um, he taught me quite a few things. Yes, um, Lord Goransin, Ramin, Dua, Daji basically, film scores. I, I binge on film scores basically, and I get my inspiration from there. So that is um the key thing from today's session the key thing from today's session is understand the orchestra as in understand the orchestra understand the orchestra know it basically your role as a virtual strings arranger is you want to mimic the orchestra you cannot mimic something that you don't know so on that note we would call it a session would end the session there um if you have any question you can ask me you know although we were two minutes over time we started very late we started like um four to five minutes late so if you have any question you can ask you can post in the session or you can ask me um i i still i i recorded this session because i'm going to send it out to those that attended as well as those that indicated interest that couldn't attend the video will be uploaded on youtube so Yes, any question before we call it a session? Do, 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 do. Any question? If you have any question now is the time in the absence of questions we will call it a day i will be sending out this link to everybody and i'm looking for us to have another session where i'm looking at the 17th of september 
um i will send out links and if you're interested also sign up for that one but for that session i need i'm giving people assignment i'm giving those that attended and as well as those that watch this for the next session the assignment to be for you to arrange a strings session for any music of choice pick any music one minute make it one minute we're using the whole technique that we talked about today you know create it and bring it down to the next session and we will break it down go through it together so before i end this session do you have any question did you bring any question for me sharon femi no questions all right great so i'm gonna we're gonna end the session here thank you for coming i'm going to send you the links i'll play this on youtube and send to you thank you very much okay then have a lovely weekend to you all bye